we are looking at a typical cell, one of 25,000 cells that can be analyzed every second by an equipment like the one in our labs at Copenhagen University. This technology of analyzing each cell for its characteristic at a dazzling speed is called flow cytometry. A cell has many characteristics that can tell us about its type and activities. For instance, a typical cell has on its membrane markers and structures which allow us to identify its type. Here we see a marker for a T cell. Typical cells also have markers within. For example, certain types of protein that the cell produces a cytokine. The cell can also tell us whether it's about to reproduce due to the formation of double set of chromosome. And as the cell divide, the cytoplasm, which we call it, fades out, giving us information about the frequency of cell division. The different characteristics of a cell and its cycle can be identified and counted by flow cytometry, by reading the amount of salt, crystals, and proteins, and even whole cells presented in our sample. The counting is achieved by one of two ways. The first one is to read the cell culture directly. The second is to introduce colored beads and antibody to our sample. So, if we want to read the amount of cytokine, this would attach itself to a specific bead color. Then antibodies would attach themselves to the cytokine, and the beads and antibodies can be identified by flow cytometry. In counting the antibodies, we count the cytokine. The counting process happens when the antibodies passes in front of a laser beam, which scatters reaching two detectors. One right ahead of the beam's original path, and another one 90 degrees transverse to it. The signal from the forward and the side scatters or scanners after being processed, form a bi-dimensional plot allowing us to determine the size and complexity of the particles detected. From those, we can identify the particle and its concentration in the sample. For other particular characteristics, the side scatter can also read the fluorescence of the antibodies attached to the particle. This is possible because the antibodies contain molecules that absorb light and re-emit it at a different color or wavelength. Depending on the characteristic that we are interested in, we are using different dyes. <laughs>